It's 6.30 p.m. and I call this meeting to order. Please stand and we will recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Winona City Council. Votes will be conducted by a voice call rather than a roll call unless requested by council member. Tonight, I've got a couple announcements. First one, regarding our famed <laughs> Monica Hennessy Mohan. I would like to join the Municipal Clerks and Finance Officers Association of Minnesota in congratulating Monica Hennessy Mohan I'm earning the designation of Minnesota Master Municipal Clerk. This prestigious certification recognizes Monica's professional competency in the execution of her individuals who have achieved this designation over the last year will take place at the MC FOA Annual Conference in St. Cloud, March 22nd through the 25th of 2022. Thank you, Monica, Thank you. for everything you do. I think we can all echo that sentiment. Uh, also, uh, Minnesota's public library support organizations each contain a few members who are movers and shakers, volunteers whose dedication, creativity, and boundless energy drive their organization forward. In recognition of this fact, the Minnesota Association of Library Friends, MALF, created its Stand Up for Standout Friends initiative. We invited MALF member organizations, including the Friends of the Winona Public Library, to put forward the name of one friend of the library in our area who is particularly noteworthy for their devotion and or creativity. Among other honors, each designee received a commendation at this year's MALF conference, books signed by our keynoting authors, and a matted certificate of recognition. For the sixth annual cycle, we had 15 stand-up honorees in total. Included in that distinguished class is Emily Tipton of Winona. Emily joined the board of, of the Friends of Winona Public Library in 2019, a remarkably short, short time ago, considering her almost superhuman contributions to date to the group's programming reach and fundraising capacity. Emily almost single-handedly brought the Dolly Parton Imagination Library Initiative to Winona. At the onset, she secured tens of thousands of dollars in grant funding to bring this nationally reputed literacy program to the area. When the program kicked off formally in, the, in June of 2020, the Friends hoped to register one-sixth of Winona's, Winona County's eligible children aged zero to five they surpassed that goal in a single day. It was the first of many outcomes that exceeded expectations in this pilot year. Success breeds success. And this debut collaboration with the Dolly Parton Imagination Library boosted Emily in her efforts to fundraise an additional $20,000 in grant money to continue the program. I'd like to personally thank you, Emily Timpton, for the work that she did for the library. City Manager Chad Ubel. Okay, I want to clap for Emily. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Mayor and Council, no comments tonight. Thank you. Okay. I'll now ask the City Clerk to take roll call. <laughs> Superior excellence in clerk. <laughs> Just kidding. I've already heard. Uh, Mayor Sherman. Here. Council Member Young. Here. Moeller. Here. Alexander. Here. Iden. Here. Borzakowski. Here. Rapinski. Here. Under the required public hearings, item 2.1 is the proposed 2022 South Baker Street reconstruction project. For each public hearing, staff will make a short presentation. Then I'll ask if anyone from the public wishes to speak to the matter. You must clearly state your name and address. You will be given up to three minutes to make your testimony. I will call three times for public comments. Once the hearing is closed, the public may not participate in any discussion by city council. Who do we have from staff, Chad or Ryan, go ahead. Ryan. Yep, Ryan. 
superior excellence in mayorship. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is our 2022 state aid reconstruction project. Um, we are planning on reconstructing South Baker from Fifth Ave to Gilmore, or Fifth Street to Gilmore Ave, excuse me. Um, this will be a full reconstruct, uh, new curb, new sanitary, new storm, new water, um, everything like that. And we will have um, 15 properties getting new water service lines that will be assessed. So that's about it. All right, I'll now open the meeting to public comment. Does anyone from the public wish to speak regarding item 2.1, the proposed 2022 South Baker Street reconstruction project? I will now ask again a second time, does anybody from the public wish to speak to this matter? Again, would anybody from the public wish to speak regarding the proposed 2022 South Baker Street reconstruction project? Hearing no one, I will now close the public hearing. I'd make a motion to adopt the attached resolution to order the improvements and to advertise for bids. Second. We have a motion from Michelle, a second from Eileen. Any discussion? Questions, George? Yes, as far as these water service hookups go, I mean, that's reasonable because that's getting tore up. So I, I know I think we mentioned all the other homeowners, if there's anything else that they need done, maybe a new sewer line while that street is open, now is the time to do it. So, but that's, uh, people question the cost of it, but that's very reasonable if you were to do that on your own, so. Absolutely, I agree. Mr. Mayor, if I could just ask Please. a quick question, even related to what George says, said there. So it is, uh, it's, they get new water service, a new water service line, uh, sewer? Uh, sewer line is not replaced. Um, we have some new sewer. I think we have some reconnect as well. Um, I just we have all new sewers all. okay. It would be curious that you would do one but not the other That's when it's right there. Okay. So you're saying it's it's sewer and water. Yes. They would okay. Be getting assessed That's water. what I want to know. Okay. Thank you. And that, that's very inexpensive. I look at that price compared. If you did this yourself, that's that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> yeah, thousand. I've seen fifteen quoted. Yep. <clears throat> Any other comments, George? No. Are there one or two homes there that are not hooked to city water at all? Not that I know of. I guess I have to yeah, I thought there was one, one or two. So. I um, do you have any idea, once this gets started, do you have any idea how long it'll take to complete? Um, probably in the four month range. Okay. Probably. Okay. It depends on weather and everything like that, but I would guess four months if we have decent weather. Okay. So if it starts probably in the summer-ish, it will go through till when school starts? Yeah. Um, we do have a provision in there. So um, the Gilmore Avenue intersection can only be closed during the summer and has to be open before school. Great, thank you. Awesome. Thank you for that, Eileen. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 2.2 .2 is the public hearing regarding the implementation of body worn camera program by the Winona Police Department and Chief Williams is here. Mayor and Council, this is um, <clears throat> something that's required by Minnesota state statute is to have a public comment uh, period prior to uh, the implementation or purchase of a body worn camera system. Um, we've been having the discussion uh, for a couple of years now. Our current in-car camera solution has uh, reached its end of life and uh, we are already replacing hardware features for that. So um, as we're moving forward with the replacement of that, we thought that this would probably be the best time to implement a body-worn camera system um, in addition to the in-car camera system upgrade um, in order to all be on the same platform so that they're all operating within the same part. So there's going to be two uh, public comment periods. One would be 
the one for this evening to get input from uh, the public in terms of whether or not they feel that the body worn camera program is a feasible um, program for the city of Winona, pros and cons that they feel and things that the police department should be looking at um, in determining whether or not they're gonna implement the program and the costs that are associated with it. And then uh, if we are allowed to move forward on this, uh, then we would be looking at the policy and there would be another public comment period um, for the public to look at the policy as it relates to the body worn camera system implementation within the Winona Police Department. Thank you, Chief Williams. Uh, I'm going to open up public comment first, right? Yep. I will now open the public comment <clears throat> regarding item 2.2, implementation of body-worn camera program by police. Does any from me, anybody from the public wish to speak to this matter? Again, I will ask if anyone from the public wishes to speak on this matter. Does anybody from the public wish to speak on the implementation of body-worn camera program by police? Hearing none, I will now close the public hearing. Any discussion or comment, Pam? Question, yes. Yes. Um, are you accepting public input through any other uh, means besides the public hearing tonight? It would be via email as well. Email, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Eileen? Um, I think I know the answer to this, but I just want to, this was something that was in the CIP, right? And it's in the budget for this year. We had originally put it in the CIP and then we thought that we could move it into an actual line item for the budget. Okay. So it isn't, this was something that was already in the budget that we voted. Okay, great. Um, and then the other question I had chief was, um, I remember some discussion about this, that, um, because of the putting all of the technology on the same platform, is there was there some other state requirements having to do with our insurance rates that that were requesting that more cities were using the body cams versus the dashboard ones, or is this just purely because we were moving up the technology? I think that the aspect of the the platform deals with use in terms of. Um, ease of ability for the officers to have one and the dissemination of the information and that type of thing. I think the insurance discussion comes in oftentimes in terms of protection for the city and the officers and the public from the standpoint of now that you have body cam video that gives you another um, uh, means of collecting information and evidence and data that that type of thing that it can protect the city from liability as well as the officer. So I think that's probably where the insurance discussion came in. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. George? Uh, again, Chief, what does like, like one camera cost for an officer? So we, <laughs> we actually made application for a grant uh, to try and offset the cost and uh, the grant itself allows for two thousand dollars per camp per officer per per camera um, what we've been faced with when we're looking at the pricing is that the companies want to roll it all together obviously they want to give us the in-car solution and they also want to give us the body cam solution and so they will say here's your total package to include 38 body worn cameras uh, 13 in-car cameras, the cloud storage, the redaction software, and everything to that point. Um, to actually have them split it out, they're very hesitant to do that, at least the, the vendors that we've come across. What is the reaction of the officers uh, for this? The officers are, uh, I would say, pretty close to 100% in favor of it. Um, I had discussion at the law enforcement center with several of the officers who um, were actually, as, as the union stated, that they were going to write a letter of support um, in, to try and get the body warrants implemented because they feel it's a safety feature for them as well as a protection for them. And it also um, adds transparency to the police department and to the job that we do and uh, allows the public to see just exactly what it is that we deal with on a daily basis. Um, and they felt that it was a level of protection to, to, to help protect them against uh, possible frivolous lawsuits or citizens complaints um, where maybe there was a misunderstanding or something. It's on video, the audio is there and maybe what somebody thought they heard wasn't necessarily there. So uh, we have the police uh, patrol officer union, we have the sergeant union, and both of them um, were going to write letters of support um, in favor of, of the body-worn camera system. 
Thank you, Chief. Pam, you had another question? Yes, I did have another question. Uh, does this include funds to hire people to go through this film footage? Or you mentioned cloud storage. Uh, there actually is another provision in state statute that requires an audit by an independent um, firm. Um, that will be, I believe, two years after implementation of it that you have to do it every two years. That will, um, of course, have to be budgeted for as a line item. And it's an external uh, firm that would actually do the audit. Um, in terms of, we didn't add any personnel uh, to do any of the redaction or the data requests. Uh, in speaking with other law enforcement agencies throughout the state, they said that they have not really been inundated with a significant number of data requests, unless of course they have a major incident within their city, then they're, then they're really buried with requests. Uh, but the day-to-day -day, uh, requests have been very minimal and we feel that we can continue to do that with our current staff. Thank you. Michelle? I was gonna ask something similar along those lines. I think when we first brought this up years ago, there was concerns about um, minors in the videos and not being able to share that publicly and having to have storage space and someone to go through and redact anything that didn't, that involved a minor. So their protection for their identity and their image. And what it sounds like you're saying is now because we do a lot of storage on the cloud and most of the data is not requested that we won't run into issues with people requesting data that involve minors or incidents with minors? Well, the Minnesota data practices law is pretty specific in terms of what can and cannot be released. Mm -hmm. uh, the redaction software that is provided by the um, video uh, companies is, it's, uh, I don't wanna say it's unique, but it's, it's pretty easy to handle. Um, you're able to pull up the frame of video. You're able to select the individuals that you, don't want their faces shown and the computer will actually go through and blur that person's face throughout the video um, and it does it automatically and then you go back through there are instances um, if they break the the field of view in other words if they put their hand up or something breaks that field of view on their of their face you would have to go through and select that one again but in terms of having to go through every single frame and blur it out you don't you don't have to do that the computer takes care of it for you so it sounds like technology is caught up with the needs of the police department in that instance absolutely so does that mean that the majority of police officers or certain staff members would be trained on how to use this um, system or are you going to designate someone at the department to oversee that material i'm still assuming that someone much like with your, your cameras on your car, the, the amount of space and equipment that it requires for just one car to download um, after it's been out on the cycle. I'm assuming it's similar for body cams and somehow someone has to oversee that entire procedure. Mm. So I don't know if you're looking at the, the whole community of police officers or there's people in your department that you think you can select to a point for that. I guess I'm going off of Pam and looking at if we're gonna be hiring more people and what their role would be and what that expense would add to this. I think that Brad volunteered. Oh, <laughs> excellent Brad. <laughs> it does fall under kind of his category, yeah. so I, I get that. Uh, actually, the um, as we've been discussing it, we, we're going to put some uh, checks and balances in place, not giving everybody carte blanche the ability to redact uh, software because then you have to give them access to all the video and uh, the officers don't need access to all the videos. And, and uh, we're kind of looking as, as using our support staff as it stands right now and probably the administrative staff. Um, we also have a uh, relief sergeants uh, that work a nine in the morning until nine in the evening shift. And we're looking at, at possibly delegating the responsibility of redaction to those relief sergeant positions that they'd be able to do it. And again, it'll be kind of trial and error to see how much data, um, how many data requests we get, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Thank you, Chief Williams. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks, Chief. And moving on to the petitions, requests, and communications, item 3.1, reappointments to the Board of Adjustment of Travis Biggie, Tom Conway, and Tim Breeza. So moved. Second. We have a motion from Michelle, a second from Eileen. Any discussion? Excellent appointments. Excellent. Thank you.
Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.2 is the Bluff Country Co-op closure request for parts of municipal lot number 12 on Saturday, April 23rd. So moved. Second. Motion from Michelle, second from Pam. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.3 is a request for a 15 minute parking stall on 4th Street. Move to introduce that attached ordinance. Second. Motion from Michelle, second from Eileen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.4 is the temporary wine and malt liquor licenses for Hurry Back Productions concerts. Move to approve the licenses. Second. We have a motion from George, a second from Pam. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.5 is a request for premises permit for lawful gambling for the Rolling Stone JCs to be used at Hemp Plus. So moved. Second. We have a motion from Michelle, a second from Eileen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Under new business. Item 5.1 is the comprehensive plan working draft vision and values. I'd make a motion to approve the working draft. Second. We have a motion from Michelle, a second from Eileen. Any discussion? I, I do, if you don't mind. Please, Steve. This, this is an excellent, uh, uh, um, this is a real improvement. I, I noticed uh, um, multiple uh, rewrites here that I, I think really highlight uh, uh, the direction that we're going. I, I like this. I read this numerous times. Uh, the word growth was inserted. I, I'm, I appreciate that. I think that's important um, for the direction that we're going. While this document is important, far more importantly is going to be the detail behind it. That's how we, how we realize this, how we activate this vision. So greatly appreciate the vision. Uh, I'm greatly looking forward to the to the work, uh, the excellent work that I, I know is coming. So I support what we have here. Very good. Thank you, Steve. Pam, please. Yes. So I I truly appreciate this draft, and I appreciate the writing skill that's gone into it. I have some experience with writing with a committee, so I know <laughs> <laughs> I know how much work probably went into this, and it's very good. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Any other comments or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.2 is the Winona Senior Advocacy Grant Agreement and the Business Associate Agreement. I'd make a motion to approve the attached agreements and authorize the mayor and clerk to execute the contract with Winona County. Second. We have a motion from Michelle, a second from Eileen. Any discussion? Pam? Yeah, please. Um, it, it says here that the in in 2022 staff submitted a request for 50,233. Same amount was submitted in 2021. Is someone here to answer? answer? Okay, okay, good. Uh, but the county only allocated 29,500. So is there a reason for that? Um, so yeah, the, actually, historically, we, the county's always given 29,500 uh, in the past year, we've requested 50,223. And this year, they allocated 41,785. Um, I came in on the very tail end of this, but that is what the county has agreed to pay for services, which is an increase, which is good. Yeah. Um, but it's still not that full amount that we requested. Okay, so it had nothing to do with COVID. This is just what the city, the county has always yeah. done. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. George, did you have a comment uh, or a question? Pretty much uh, what Pam was going to be asking. So. Okay, very good. Any other questions? Could I ask, how, how do we determine the $50,223? <laughs> that, maybe I can actually defer to Chad because I think he was more involved in that process. <laughs> uh, Mayor and Council, um, along with staff, uh, we look at all the uh, services we provide uh, through advocacy, number of clients served, hours worked, and come up with a formula based on hours worked, and then calculate that out on um, 
again, wage and benefits, right. and we submit that to the county, and that's why it's a specific dollar amount and not just a flat um, amount. Okay. Thank you. Um, just to add one other comment uh, to this. Um, the request is 50223 We felt we could have asked for 75,000 plus. Mm. Uh, we did not. We had said to the county that we felt that that may be uh, too aggressive to ask uh, that amount in one year, uh, considering their budget to go from 29 to, you know, 75 plus. The 40, 41,000 does have some rationale to it. So the council's aware, uh, the county felt that that was um, the, the portion that helped uh, the most um, sustained services outside of the county, uh, including the city of, as well. But really that, that amount is really focused on outside of the city of Winona as well. So thank you. As Laura mentioned, we'll continue to ask for more funding each year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.3, <clears throat> excuse me, is the amendment for the Human Rights Commission membership. I make a motion, direct the city attorney to draft the ordinance. Second. We have a motion from Michelle, a second from Eileen. Jacob Gerpen, the HRC chair is here. If anyone has questions, Pam. Jacob, could you come up? Good evening. Hi, hi, Jacob. Thank you for serving on the Human Rights Commission, mm -hmm. first of all. Um, I have a question about uh, one of the items here in the proposed amendments is removing the clause that resident members must be eligible voters, U.S. citizen, 18 years old, Minnesota resident, et cetera, that whole paragraph there. So why are we removing that clause? So in the other um, city code, the language, um, doesn't really refer to a specific, doesn't, none of the other um, boards refer to registered voter or eligible voter. Mm -hmm. And so um, the language that uh, we had thought up would just um, include just the language saying that they're duly able to serve. And so sort of dropping the rest of that language to not specify one way or another, but just to um, let the mayor and the council determine who's able to serve. Okay, so this would line up with the other, with the other, um, the other requirements for other boards and committees. Essentially, yes. Okay, thank you, George. Uh, just looking at this now, there's 15 members originally. That were on that serve on the Human Rights Commission. Um, um, yes, fifteen potential members. Okay, potential, which is um, the highest number of any of the boards or commissions, and so that that's the original impetus for this um, that brought me here tonight um, in November after our meeting. Um, the city clerk had mentioned that maybe we should look at. Uh, downsizing to a more reasonable um, population of members, just like the other boards and commissions. And so this is what I thought up and brought to the commission and they approved. Because looking at this going to 10 members, if you ever get a full commission, I would just as soon see that be an odd number at either nine or 11, so that when you take a vote, uh, you're not going to have a tie vote. You know, one way you're going to have a, a win vote or a, mm -hmm. you know, or a no vote. So, and I had, I had thought of that and didn't really have a feeling one way or the other. So I'm I wouldn't be opposed to I would I would say if you're going to change it, change it to eleven rather than nine. Well, do we need a motion on that? I would make a motion to uh, go from ten members to eleven. I'll second that. Um, could I modification to that, Mich that Michelle Aaron uh, I'll do Michelle first Aaron Steve I would make a motion that we modify that the 11th member is the sixth member from within the city limits then because we have to put them somewhere so it should be six members from the city of Winona 
Okay, that's, um, I'm okay with that. Okay. Aaron, go ahead. Mayor, I just have a quick clarification, clarification question. So are other committees allow non-US citizens, non-Minnesota residents, felons and stuff on them? Uh, the language generally says, I'll- oh, Go ahead. Yeah, I'll, please, I'll Jacob. Defer to, I'll Absolutely, defer to, please. I'll defer to the city clerk. So I, I did a summary. I did a summary for the council. Oops, and there's two for the media um, that I emailed out this afternoon. They have various um, language, but some of the commissions, well, most of the commissions do say Winona citizens. Um, the merit board does say a qualified elector, which would be an eligible voter. Uh, most of the commissions um, have other requirements such as for the board of building and fire court board of a board of appeals, they have to have experience and training on the subject matter. Um, okay. Mayor, I, I'm just, I'm uncomfortable taking that out of there. That's all. Okay. Um, I, my ears perked up, or my eyes, I guess, uh, when I read that, but I, after reading the requirements, I don't think it's, I don't think the language is intended to say, um, you know, we're seeking out X, Y, and Z type of person, but making the description for who serves on this commission match up to um, other commissions that we have. And most of the other commissions do not have language that says you have to be an eligible voter. Um, and I think especially for a human rights commission, it may at times be valuable to have um, folks that are perhaps in recovery or perhaps they are a Winona resident, but not a US citizen. We do have quite a few international students and folks who live in town here. So I don't, I think that um, if that's something in question, we ultimately approve who gets appointed to the commission. So. I think we can make those decisions on a case by case basis. Makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. And, it, and it could also allow someone under 18 to serve as well. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Michelle? I, I wouldn't have minded if we kept the Minnesota resident in. I don't care if they're a registered voter, that's a personal choice. I do appreciate that removing the felony, though, I do think there are quite a few people that have made errors in their youth that are trying to make amends. And I think as a council, we can determine when they are brought forward, if we feel like they don't fit that requirement um, or they, they're they uh, ineligible because of that, then we can make that decision at the time. But I know plenty of people that have made choices in their youth that they regret. And I would not want them to be uh, disallowed from service simply because they made an error in judgment. One of the best ways for people to become part of society again is to actively participate. Yeah, and be right. and has shown they have value. Yeah. And I think serving on the board like this shows you have value in the community's eyes. So I don't have a problem with that. And I'm okay with the language change. Um, I think the 11 and six that we just talked about is, is great. Mm. Uh, the odd number was a good suggestion. Steve? Yes, Jacob, do you think that this restructure will help your, your commission uh, achieve its goals? Is this what you need? Yes, I think um, it will, because we won't have to always be focused on, oh, have we talked to this person from this um, agency to see if they're interested in filling that vacancy, et cetera. Um, the, other, the other thing that hasn't been highlighted is the, um, I guess, one, two, three, four, fifth uh, bullet point, which because we have agencies that have a seat on the commission, I um, had proposed having a proxy member who would be appointed in the same way. And so that would also help in the functionality because Project Fine, a lot of times mm -hmm. Fatima is there, but a lot of times Chang is there, but mm -hmm. Chang can't vote and he doesn't count towards quorum. Mm -hmm. But if, if we make this change, then he, if he's duly appointed as a proxy member by the council, then he would both count towards quorum and have a vote when Fatima is not there. And then also we're reducing 
seats that have not been filled for quite a while, right? With almost no response from those governing agencies. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Steve, question? Could I ask, you know, whoever knows this, do we do we do this proxy method that's being proposed? Do we do that? Do we do that with other commissions? Or are there any concerns with that? Is is that a thing? <laughs> so uh, for the city of Winona, boards and commissions, we do not currently have any proxy okay. members. Um, I think if Chris Hood is on, he may want to. I'd like to talk hear a little more from him on that. I mean, it would be the way they're proposing it. The proxy would be appointed by the council, as of all the other members are. It's just it would they could alternate uh, from that commission or from that agency who attends the meetings. Michelle. I will say, Steve, that the county boards that I've been involved with do have proxy. Okay. Um, I think a lot of people that sit on like the, you know, some of their jail commissions and stuff, there are alternates because everyone has busy schedules. And so I don't think it's so unusual at the county, which this is kind of a cooperative between mm -hmm. the city and county, which makes it less unusual. But I mean, I guess I would be curious to see what Chris Hood has to say. Chris Hood, could you chime in? I can. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So I haven't researched this issue. Um, it might be worthwhile to um, have the city clerk perhaps reach out to the League of Cities to see if they have any data on anything like that. Um, you know, obviously with proxies, the, the issue becomes consistency with voting. You have a person that is, you know, otherwise going to serve on a board or commission, but you know, is not the same consistent person uh, from uh, the various times that uh, people are going to be serving on there. So that's, I think, one issue to potentially consider there. Um, I am, you know, in my uh, practice, <clears throat> in terms of representing cities, I am not aware of any cities uh, that have proxy voting on boards and commissions. So, um, and again, I'm not familiar with the counties. They may do that. There may be cities that do proxy voting. I just haven't seen it before. So I think this is, um, at least in my experience, and it's anecdotal, of course, um, that, that I have not seen that um, uh, with at least city boards and commissions. Eileen? Um, I think what... Um... I mean, obviously we would want to research this first, but I think considering what uh, Michelle mentioned and also that so many of these agencies are in health and human services or social services that oftentimes staff are stretched really thin. And I think it makes sense to have a proxy, especially if the council is approving that proxy. And there is an understanding that you would not have both the primary and the proxy person at the same meeting, they cannot both vote at the same time. Um, so I, I'm comfortable with it, um, especially because I am trusting of our city attorney that if we are changing this, that there will be rules um, enumerated as far as how those can function. But, you know, especially because this also involves the county and considering the groups that we ask to participate <clears throat> in this, uh, I think it's reasonable to expect that a staff one single staff person cannot always be there. And it is um, the uh, Human Rights Commission will be able to do what they need to do more consistently without having to worry if, whether or not there's a quorum at the meetings. Mm -hmm. Jacob, Can I please? just add, this, the proxy thing is very specific to the two agents. If, we, if you pass this language, it would be only Project Fine and the Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Mm -hmm. So essentially, in so many words, we would be giving that agency a seat, whether it's mm -hmm. the primary or the proxy that is coming to the meetings. And I think if both Fatima and our uh, other gentleman that comes from Chong. Project Fine, yep. Chong, yep. Um, then they could decide who votes um, and only one of them would count towards quorum, et cetera. Thanks, and friend. and the other thing that's not listed here is that in the proposal that I had brought to the commission itself, we would also amend our bylaws to explicitly um, talk about the functionality of a proxy. 
Thank you, Jacob. George. Uh, working with the HRA board, I know Tina Schott is our representative, and I'm thinking now I don't believe we have a uh, person to fill, a, a dedicated person to, uh, appointed person, not dedicated, uh, uh, to fill in for her when she's not there. So that's going to give me something. I'll bring that up with her so we get someone appointed. And I know when I served on the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, I mean, you really knew who was who was coming to the meeting. So they're here for this judge, here for this one. It was a variety of council, county board members, uh, judges, and so and um, health workers and all that. So I'll be appointing you, George. <laughs> <laughs> Your schedule's clear, right? <laughs> Very good. Any other questions of Jacob? Jacob, thank you. Please pass that back along to HRC. I think it was developed well. I think the the reasoning for each step was excellent. Um, and thanks, thanks for uh, catching the the even number there. So, thank you. Thank you for the uh, fruitful discussion. Absolutely. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. So we have an amendment. Amendments. Two amendments. Uh, George, who was second on that? You were? Yep, I asked that the uh, 11th member be appointed to the within city limits to make that six members instead of five. And I, is that a friendly amendment to your amendment? Is it friendly? Can it be friendly? <laughs> yeah, as yes, yes it's it friendly. It it's friendly. <laughs> because there was no second on your. Oh, I thought she seconded me. She seconded George's. Oh, I will second both. Thank you, Eileen. Okay. So do you want to take that as one amendment? I, I would like to, if I that's possible, too. if that's all right. Fine. Yep. M Mr. Mayor, are we voting on the amendment and then and then on the and then on the uh, the item? Correct. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yep. Okay. Ready? All right. Uh, we'll vote on the amendment first. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Amendment passes. Mayor. Yes. Now. Uh, what have we decided on the proxy now? We're going to allow that or she's going to do research first and then no, we're going to allow it. I, I was not proposing any change. I'm comfortable with the okay. language here. I am as well. I'm assuming because I'm assuming now when they bring back what will be a draft ordinance, if there is a specific problem that has not been evident by our discussion that it will be made clear to us at that point that proxies would not be allowed for whatever the reason is. Am I correct? So I think it's okay to leave it. Just so I understand what 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 you've said, Michelle. So we're, we've we'll, this is going to circle back to our 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 meeting again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is step one. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm, I agree. So Thank the you. motion is to direct the attorney to draft an ordinance gotcha. to amend the uh, membership. If our research finds that we can do the proxy, it will be included. Gotcha. If not, it would be excluded with an explanation why. I feel good about it now. Okay. So, George. Uh, Monica, you're okay with all these uh, amendments? And okay. She's a master clerk. <laughs> <laughs> we need to amend her uh, name plaque. Yeah, do this by herself. Do. She doesn't even need it. needs to say master clerk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take it. Vote. We're ready to vote on that, right? We're good. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.4 is the Green Corps application. Uh, make a motion to direct staff to submit the application second. and approve the attached resolution. <laughs> we have a motion from Michelle, a second I from Eileen. That. John <laughs> Howard is here if anybody has any questions for him. <laughs> George, can you just touch base on this? I know we've done this before, so. We're going to have to take a breath. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Yes, this would be our fourth uh, Green Corps member, um, to my knowledge. Uh, they are a they they serve uh, for about eleven months. They're they're basically a, a young, usually a young professional, someone who's uh, either worked in the environmental field or is hoping to work there. Uh, and uh, they they generally are from the Min from the Minnesota area, but not necessarily. Uh, and there are experience with the, them in the past that they've they've worked hard. They work basically full time. Um, and I think the best part is they're. They're, they're paid for by the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. So all we need to do is provide them space and just a little bit of mentorship. And they, they've been a very, very good addition um, to the city in my experience. 
last year our Green Corps member was doing tree inventory primarily. Is that right? Uh, we actually, so we have, there's, there's two uh, pools of environmental AmeriCorps members. Uh, so uh, last year and this year, we have a community forestry Corps member. Okay. So they're separate from Green Corps. Gotcha. And they, they just, they just focus on trees by and large. Okay. Um, Very good. Any other questions, comments, discussion? Thank you, John. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.5 is the contract amendment for Sunday transit service. And make a motion to approve the amendment to the agreement with transport three and to authorize the mayor and clerk to sign that order. Second. We have a motion from Michelle, a second from Eileen. Any questions? I think Monica can answer those if anybody, Eileen? Not a question. I'm just happy that we'll be able to um, offer uh, additional service hours because I think that's always needed in the community and um, to provide dial a ride on Sundays is, is really great because I know a lot of folks that depend on that um, still need to go places on their days off. Yeah. Thank you, Eileen. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.6 is to set the bus fare for Sunday transit service. I'd make a motion to introduce the attached ordinance. Motion from Michelle, second from Eileen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion passes. Item 5.7 is the Prairie Island Campground Schematic Design. Make a motion to authorize the city manager to sign the proposal from OWA Architects to conduct a schematic design for a welcoming center at Prairie Island. Second. We have a motion from, Mich from Michelle, second from Pam. Any discussion? <coughs> Questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And item 5.8, the city manager employment agreement. I'd make a motion that the city council approve the employment agreement between the city of Winona and Chad Ubel and that the mayor and clerk execute the agreement. Second. Motion from Michelle, second from Eileen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 7.1 is council concerns. We'll start with council member Borzikowski. Thank you. Uh, Hamilton Street Railroad Crossing. <laughs> now, we've been promising those people in that area, I believe for about the last four years, it's going to get fixed. When they redid Hamilton Street, it was going to get fixed a year after that. Then it's not fixed, not fixed, still not fixed. Well, now we have this money coming from the second train for railroad crossings. That could be another three years before it gets fixed. Yeah. What can we do? Because we told the residents in that area it's getting fixed. I know uh, every time I see the people from there, when's it getting fixed? And we kept saying we're going to fix it, but nothing's done. I haven't heard anything lately. Um, the last I heard was the railroad was okay with doing it. It was the actual getting the materials for the crossing we couldn't get. So that's been the issue is you get that concrete pad that goes in the railroad, we can't get that. So that's been the issue. So if you could do a follow up and just let council know what the status of that project is. So yep. uh, it's gone on long enough now. It's been, like I say, four years. So yep. All right, I mean, can you can you throw Sioux Street in on that as well? <laughs> <laughs> the reason being is because uh, for over a year now, I've been asking CP to take care of the after they redid Sue, after we did the reconstruction there, they took out the rubber things that are kind of spacers between the okay. rail and the concrete pad. They came in within three days and pulled them out. Okay. And they're still sitting in a pile sitting there. Okay. So um, again, that, that might be, you know, a materials issue, a sourcing issue, procurement, and that's why they haven't been replaced yet. Yep. But um, that, that also is something I, I've blown a couple $80 bike tires on that. So um, recommendation is usually go slower or walk across, but that's, you know, they're there for a reason. And yeah. I'd like to see them replaced. I've, I've reached out to the CP uh, contact a few times about it and it's kind of lip they're service. They're hard to get in touch with. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So 
Well, since we're on railroad crossings, <laughs> oh boy, uh, go away. <laughs> we're on them. Uh, the one on Walnut Street that takes you down to the levee. You know, we kind of pride ourselves in the levee. And I'll tell you, you go over that one. If you have dentures, you're not going to have them after you cross those tracks. So another one to look at as well, too. So thank you. And also just one more thing I forgot to mention at our last council meeting. And I believe Councilwoman Moeller may have forgot to mention this, but uh, at our last council meeting, it was Casimir Pulaski Day. I'm so sorry, George. You're being from Illinois and uh, so Chicago, sorry. so oh, <laughs> that's all. Thank you. Thank you, George. Council I, Member I Alexander. I haven't really had anything, but I just want to say, Railroad, do you see what you do to us? Do you see? George can't even go on part of the fourth ward anymore. <laughs> um, no, I have nothing tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Council Member Item. Nothing tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Council Member Muller. Uh, happy yesterday was the spring equinox. Yeah. Happy spring. So no. excited. Yeah. <laughs> Till next all? week. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Eileen. Council Member Young. No, thanks. Okay. Council Member Rupinski. Uh, nothing, Mayor. Very good. Moving on to the consent agenda, there are three items the approval of the minutes from March 7th, a claim by the city against Chris Swinger, and a claim against the city by Karen Kletsky. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion from Michelle, second from Eileen. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, the time being 721 and no further business to come before this council this evening, I move we adjourn. I'll second that. Eileen seconded that. She beat me to it. Motion for Michelle, second from Eileen. Meeting is adjourned. Thank Good you, everyone. Job. Good job.